Hey everyone, Danny Martinez here. We're over here at headquarters at EMP Corp. Welcome to my metal shop. All right, this is exciting. All right, so uh, we're gonna take a quick tour through our facility. Uh, this is something that's been in the works for um, almost two years now. Uh, believe it or not, this building was empty two years ago. Uh, but essentially what we're doing here is uh, creating a metal fabrication facility. Uh, we do everything here from cutting metal to milling it, bending it, grinding it, welding, uh, powder wow. coating, uh, flat sheet stock, pipes, uh, you name it. We pretty much have every single almost every single uh, machine that you can want for a metal shop. Um, and we're ready to go live here in the next couple of months. Follow me. Cool. Where do we start? We'll go this way. Where do we start with the... All right, these are all our front load lasers. Uh, they're a little bit smaller in format. Um, essentially, uh, the better thing here is that these are made for precision. Uh, they can hold higher tolerances. Uh, so, uh, for example, this machine here, uh, the, the, entire, um, the, the entire motion control system is basically on, on a granite slab. Um, you know, so uh, the, the one over here to my right, uh, every single axis has uh, two rails, two bearing blocks. Um, anything to make the machine more rigid and basically hold tire tolerances. Uh, so it's really good for doing like really tiny intricate parts. Uh, you know, if you had to cut like the, uh, the internal parts to like a watch um, or, or, you know, uh, PCB boards, or, you know, things of that, that nature, uh, these are the machines to do it. Uh, and then over here we've got our, our front load. Uh, this is actually a really nice machine. It, it has a really small footprint <laughs> for what it is. Uh, you can load a five foot by 10 foot sheet uh, of sheet metal in here. This is a uh, 3,000 uh, watt laser. Um, 3,000, yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> we use this one quite a bit. Uh, this is uh, just for one-offs. Uh, so whenever, you know, we have, uh, usually for customers, people ask us for signs and stuff like that. Um, that's usually what we do is just, you know, just throw it right here in the front load um, and cut it out for them. So Danny, are you cutting any parts for any of your units on this machine? Uh, not at this time. Not no. at this time. No. In the future. Maybe. Yeah, we can. You know, we can we can assemble pretty much any kind of panel or cabinet from scratch here. Right. Um, so, you know, it's an idea. Cool. <laughs> That's three thousand kilowatts, right? Uh, three kilowatts. Yeah, three thousand yeah. watts. Yeah. Oh, three thousand watts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is three kilowatts. I'll stop in just a second. I'll wait for it. All right, uh, behind me is our um, hydraulic press brake. Um, it's actually a hybrid uh, press brake, so it's kind of unique. It, it, it's one of the more uh, uh, energy friendly ones. Um, but uh, this thing is, uh, I believe, 120 tons. Um, wow. <laughs> and that folds metal, right? Yep. This is how we, that, you can fold metal into basically any shape. So if you want to make panels with it, any kind of brackets. Um, you know, after you cut it, this is where you would come to do that. Uh, this is uh, the heaviest machine in the building. Uh, it weighs about 35,000 pounds. Uh, wow. It wouldn't fit in a container. We had to uh, bring it on a flat rack and float it over here and then lift it out of the rack with a crane. Uh, and then uh, we had to rent a forklift that can lift it. <laughs> <laughs> it took up about the other half of this building to just bring it in here. Uh, and of course we had to reinforce the, the floor underneath it. So wow. we have about 10 inches of concrete underneath and rebar uh, just to keep this thing <laughs> Holy from, cow. from cracking the, the foundation. Um, so yeah, lots of fun to be had there. Um, uh, yeah, back in the corner there, actually you can see our welder. Yeah. Yep. Uh, laser welding is becoming, you know, extremely popular. Um, and you know, we're, uh, this one actually is a three in one. It can, you can cut with it freehand. Uh, you can weld or you can clean with it as well. So uh, we're kind of getting into experimenting with laser cleaning, just cleaning parts. 
uh, especially where we're at. We're on the Space Coast. There's a lot of aerospace here. Is you know, a lot of parts that you know people want to refurbish and, and continue to use. What wattage source is in? Uh, the, I want to say it's the 1500 uh, watts, and you could probably go to I think two or three thousand right now. Right. And yeah. it's a continuous wave because it's a welder. It's not pulsed. No, it's still pulsed. It's still pulsed. I, yeah, it, they, they still pulse it. Uh, but uh, I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll uh, make sure we fact check. I don't know if I'd want to play with it. But I'm pretty sure all of these. He uh, likes playing with They use the same <laughs> sources. You, know, you can interchange them. Nice. All right, now let's go to the big boys. Uh, let's go behind the. Uh, this is uh, one of ours. So uh, we're, we're launching our own brand of uh, EMP lasers. Uh, this is a, a combo, basically. Uh, it can do five foot by ten foot sheets. Um, it's got an automatic uh, shuttle on the back to load and unload the sheets for you. Um, and then um, you can do a, a pipe cutting. So it's got a, a small pipe cutter here on the side. And if you notice, the gantry is just extra long and it hangs over the bed, so you can switch over and, and do you know some shorter lengths of pipe. Uh, again, this is just this actually is just an overflow machine. Um, we kind of dedicated uh, to doing carbon steel. Carbon steel is pretty messy, uh, so you kind of want to sacrifice just one machine for it. Um, this was this is the one. <laughs> so um, we kind of just have a specialized machine for that. Um, uh, and this is and then over here is our, our prized uh, automated 6,000 watt uh, <laughs> fiber cutter, essentially. Um, this one's actually um, going to be used for um, uh, something that we started offering uh, to a couple of Eon customers a little over a year ago um, called uh, uh, the Metal Cutting Club. Uh, it was an incentive that we created uh, for anyone that was buying a CO2 laser um, and also wanted to be able to cut metal to where uh, we could provide them um, with a, cut, a metal cutting service um, at, a, at a wholesale price, so they can still sell this and mark it up and put it in their stores. What um, is the bed size the of that? Uh, five foot by ten five foot by ten. on this one. Yeah, we can come get a closer look. This is, um, open. You, can, you can see all the way in here. If you want to just point in the air, I don't know. It's going to want to follow me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little dark right now. But yeah, this is this is 6,000 watts, and the, and the beauty of this machine is, it is fully automated. Uh, we can feed this machine nonstop for maybe a week before we run out of sheet stock. Wow! Uh, and I'll show you how that works. Uh, we're close enough that I can see you. The I can show you where it ends. That's pretty much over here, where all the metal spits out. So this this shuttle table will spit out all of our complete our complete parts after the machine is done processing. Um, wow. I'll, I'll walk you around so you can see how this how this all works. Uh, but we'll take yeah we'll take the we'll take that way. I so, can see the uh, mechanism that picks yeah. up the sheets. Yeah, if you can see behind me, you, know, you see a massive gantry behind this machine. Uh, that was fun to install. Uh, <laughs> good <laughs> pictures of that one. But um, yep, behind me basically uh, is what loads and unloads the machine. It's a series of suction. Cups. Suction. Yep, we use compressed air. It'll it'll pick up the top sheet. It'll measure it for thickness, uh, and then it'll load it into the uh, shuttle table behind this six kilowatt laser. Uh, while the machine is cutting, it will grab another sheet and load it into the empty one after it's emptied out the the finished piece. So it'll grab the finished piece, dump it over there where we first uh, went, and then it'll come get a new sheet and and keep it going. Wow. Uh, so. If you've ever had to pick up a sheet of sheet metal, it is extremely <laughs> heavy and yeah. extremely dangerous. It requires two people, and I don't think that after a half hour they can continue to do it. Yeah. Uh, so you really, you know, this is really one of the bottlenecks in, in, uh, in metal fabrication is just the loading and unloading. Yeah. Uh, it takes up a, a bit of a footprint, but you know, one person can really just manage this whole system um, on their own. Danny, what's what's this right here? Oh, this is our yeah. fume extractor. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was speakers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the fume extractor. Those are filter cartridges yes. right here? Yep. You draw the filters for it. Get replaced? Uh, they last pretty long. You can replace them. We run compressed air into them. 
uh -huh. uh, and essentially every now and then you'll hear a loud boom and it's just uh, basically you're firing a cannon of compressed air in and it's emptying out all the filters. Which then goes, yeah. all, all the particulates just go down here dumps into the and bottom. then you dump all that slag yeah. in. So this filters out. to the indoors? Yes, yeah. yeah, it does. Very cool, man. Yeah, yeah, all of, all of this was, was, this was one of the things we actually did plan out well. If you notice, everything had its own sub panels, all the power is running underneath the ground. Um, you know, all of this was plotted and you know, we had to basically lay all this down before we poured the concrete. Uh, so wow. It was, uh, yeah, it was definitely a project uh, in the making. I wanna say we, uh, we revised the blueprints over a hundred times. Um, wow. The yeah, contractor wanted to walk off the job site. <laughs> <laughs> There's the uh, wrap for the. Side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and behind me, what you see here is uh, is basically our our metal sheet. Uh, it's our warehouse. So there's eight levels of uh, storage. Uh, you can store different types of material. Each shelf can hold about three tons of, of metal. Uh, not much more. Don't ask us how we know. Uh, but three tons is the max. <laughs> Got it. Before things start to bend. <laughs> and creak. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, essentially the computer can pick whatever type of metal you want. Uh, this elevator behind me will go up. It'll pick up, it'll pull out the, the shelf that you want, slide it underneath, and that's where the suction cups and the loader will grab the sheets off of there and start loading the machine. Wow. That's uh, impressive. So you can switch between type, different types of steel, aluminum, um, you can do all that seamlessly just through the software. Um, yeah, yeah. This is this is also very fun to assemble, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have ever had to build your own laser, yeah, um, it's still the same no matter how large the laser is. Yeah. There's not any instructions with it, <laughs> and uh, you just need more than one person. Yeah, to do this. you just need a couple of forklifts. <laughs> Some this one took about three forklifts. <laughs> some to brainiacs to help yeah. put it together. Yep. Right? And, and some daring souls, young right. guys that'll climb to the top and, and try to <laughs> put bolts together. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is this is really is one of our our favorite pieces of machinery here. Um, I think they're uh, of these. This is one of two right now in the U.S. Uh, really? From from HSG. So it's not it's not you know automation is something that's just starting to to catch on. Um, at, at least at an affordable price range. You know, mm -hmm. the people that actually do have automation, you know, these are your Goliath, you know, manufacturers mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, for people like us to be able to get our hands on it, it's really nice. So it's starting to come into the market now. It's at a, at a price point that you know more people get their hands on it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Over here, oh, this is one of my faves. <laughs> this is our vertical milling center. Uh, so this is a subtractive machine that we're milling aluminum here. You can mill steel as well. Um, you know, if you, if you want to make a custom set of wheels, uh, I am dying to try it. Uh, but this is actually uh, where we mill out our gantries for the Signature Series. Uh, so remember, we mentioned the Signature Series yeah. has its own milled out gantry from a solid piece of aluminum. Um, it's, still, it's still very dirty. We were probably milling out a couple of gantries, you know, just maybe two or three nights before the show. <laughs> those are those nice I-beam shaped gantry rails. Yes, right. yes. They're extremely on, on the red rigid. Line series. Yeah. And, uh, the signature. It, on the signature series. How long does it take to, to mill one of those out? Have you ever... Do you know I think several hours. Yeah, several hours. It did, yeah. And, and, you know, we could probably cut that down. These were, you know, the first ones that we really made. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of this is still, you know, in its raw form and eventually we'll, we'll refine it and find faster ways to do it. Um, but yeah, you know, this is, again, we're, we're for hire. So parts, brackets, you know, anything, motor mounts, like you name it, you know, you can mill it from a piece or you can start from scratch, bend it, form it, weld it. Uh, you know, you can go, go either way. Uh, what you see here is a 20 foot rotary, essentially. All right, we can cut basically a uh, 20 foot lens of square pipe, I-beam, ground pipe. It does all kinds of different shapes. And, and behind me here is the auto loader. But this also has automated loading as well. So you're not physically putting the pipes in here. It's got a hopper in the back. You just throw a whole pile of pipes in there and it'll just keep loading and feeding it in and out. Uh, so it's a, it's a nice little system. Uh, you know, tube frames and chassis, 
gym equipment, I mean, all that stuff is just raw bar or pipe before it becomes, you know, what it actually is. Even if you start looking at parts of these machines, they were made, like, even like that shield right there. You know, this was... <laughs> this is square tubing. You know, this came out of one of these machines. Wow. And you cut it, you bend it, weld it, and powder coat it. Uh, yeah, and then over on this side is where, you know, this is a 3,000 watt laser. So this is where all the cutting happens. It's actually a really small, small cabinet over here. All right, so if you, if you look inside here, you can kind of see where the other end of the chuck is. Um, and the laser head's kind of tucked in there. It's, it's kind of hard to see, but all the cuts happen here, and then it spits them out. It just dumps them right here on the side. It, it's really impressive to see. It happens very, very quickly. Um, it's, it's definitely one of the favorite machines in the shop. Wow. Uh, we also put a gate over here just in case we had a longer uh, piece available. <laughs> we could open the gate and just kind of bring it out <laughs> past the hallway there. Oh yeah, there's a good one. That was uh, one of the, uh, a candle sleeve that we made. I'm glad you found that. So you kind of sit that around a candle. Mm -hmm. I'll hold it up to the to, to, uh, uh, camera as well. Danny, yeah, how did you uh, how did you end up picking all the the manufacturers like what, what's what's the process of like going through like deciding who's going to be your pipe cutter who's going to be your flatbed cutter who's going to be your cnc machine like what was the process like for you oh man well you know, like picking pick because you, you know you can get tons yeah. tons of people jogging through your business you yeah know? and yeah um, you go there yourself and go visit the factory oh no no i do it all online a subscription-based model uh, for materials uh, called EMP Club. Yeah. We've got our own acrylic, our own wood, uh, our own tumblers, our own leather, um, and we're basically uh, creating uh, more like a, like a wholesale club, kind of like a Sam's Club or a BJ's or a Costco, uh, where you pay a membership fee um, and you can buy stuff in bulk at a reduced price. So that's something in progress. We're planning on launching that this summer. Uh, we've got a ton of the material out now, uh, so now we're just, you know, working on finalizing the color options and, you know, storage is a thing here. We've, we're running out of room. <laughs> so right now our powder coat line is kind of covered. You can't really see much of it because all these boxes are, but, you know, if you look behind us, um, you know, up top here, this is all a conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. And there, there's an oven, there's, there's a paint booth in the back. And if you see that yellow tower behind me, there's one on each side. Those are articulating arms holding spray guns. And they go up and down and they shoot powder on all the parts that run through that line. And eventually, it'll come into here, which is our, uh, our giant oven. So if we come, if we come over here, I think will be the best shot. That's the top. It goes up top. Oh, it goes way up there. Yeah, the oven's up top. Uh -huh. yeah, so the oven's on the second floor. Yeah. <laughs> so all your parts flow through here. They, they go all the way to the top, they get baked. And then they come back down and out to the other side, or the other way around. Sorry, you come up that way, come out this way, and then you unload and it's, it's a done part. Oh. So, so how fun. many square feet is this whole building? Uh, 22,500 square feet. And you've already outgrown it? We, we outgrew it the first six months, I think. How, yeah. long, how long does it take for a round trip around the whole paint the oven? It depends how hot you have the oven. <laughs> but yeah. What kind of parts are you powder coated? I don't know the answer though. Um, I, it, it could be really anything. Tumblers? No, no, I mean, you know. You can just get those done at the factory. Yeah, right? they come powder coated. Just for the parts for the laser yeah right? i mean you know if someone orders a bracket right they sure that might they might want it powder coated at the end yeah uh, instead of just the raw metal uh, but what we, we're doing you know with the uh, metal cutting club uh, most of our orders are going to be sheet or signage mm -hmm. you know if you, what you saw at the show was people using you know wood and acrylic to make signage using metal is extremely popular and attractive but you know trying to get into that you, most people can't yeah they don't have the space uh, or the money, and if they have those, then sometimes they don't have the power. Like the How electricity even, in this building is nuts. 
uh, for us, you know, this is our first metal shop that we've ever built. So, um, you know, we're learning as we go. Uh, the idea here is, is to get this thing live um, before summer. Uh, so we're, we're probably about six months behind schedule. Um, but you know, other projects pop in, you know, the new Eon Red Line that you know, kind of sidetracked us. And you know, we've got one team doing all these projects, the consumables, you know, the, the Eon line, the HSG line. So, you know, we're kind of bouncing around every now and then. And right. you know, we, we stop one project to pick, take another one a little further. and Priority. Vice versa. Yeah. So, you know, everyone that's, that's been waiting for Metal Cutting Club, it's coming, trust me. I need to get this side of the building going. It's not paying for, for anything. <laughs> so it takes up half of the, half of the facility. Uh, I will get my office going uh, this summer too, for anyone who, you know, who's, who's wondering you know, how I prioritize things. Uh, put myself last. Uh, if you look up top there, if you want to turn around, that's supposed to be my office. Um, here, maybe spin around this way. Yeah, there we go. You can see it right up here. Oh, uh, way up there. Yeah. The Eagle's yeah. Nest. I've got the second floor. Maybe this year I'll have an office. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anywhere to work in my building. <laughs> they call that the Eagle's Nest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like being immersed. When I go up there, I can see the entire building. I can look at everything from up above. My DeLorean. Wow. Hey, what is this? This is our metal oh, grinder. Uh, we could grind uh, metal, round edges, we could polish, we could brush sheet metal in this machine. It's got a conveyor belt over here on this side. This is where you load it. So in theory, you get your cut sheet metal. It's not ready. You know, it's got rough edges. You know, it's got a little bit of sag on it. So you gotta put it through here. And this has various stations. So the first one is just a belt sander, and that belt sander, sander is basically just going to take off the top layer of that metal. Um, so any kind of oil or, or you know dirt, blemishes, that all comes right off. Um, and it, you know for thicker pieces of metal, this this will help round the edges on them, so you don't have those sharp edges. So that's all rotating and brushing and, and basically creating that round edge. And then at the end, there's two more stations. Right now it's set up as another station for, for sanding, so it gets another, uh, another layer sanded off after it's rounded. Um, but we can also make it for brushing, um, and the last one for uh, polishing. Awesome. Um, so you can get quite a different number of finishes out the other end of this. Um, and then when you're done, you, you kind of grab it and just do the other side. So you come back around and you just feed, feed it through again. Uh, this was the this this was a, actually a really good find. There's not a lot of these out there. Um, I've never seen one. Yeah, not not any that have so many stations. Stations. I've, yeah. I've seen I've seen like just that. Yeah. Right. Large, yeah. 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 This was really a unique one. So uh, we partnered up with this company. Uh, we'll we'll get into selling these really soon as well. A, a lot of this stuff, you know, is is it comes together. If someone's buying a sheet cutter. They're probably going to need the grinder too. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty clear today. Uh, everyone's at the ISA show, so we can kind of walk through here, otherwise we'd be getting in people's way. Um, this is our small pack for Eon, so this is, you know, anytime you need parts on demand, they're coming right off our shelf. We don't use third-party suppliers to, to get you back up and running. If you need a power supplier, laser tube, or whatever, mirrors and lenses and all that stuff is stocked here. Um, and it all comes, comes out of our small pack uh, area here. Uh, and, and then we're kind of working into the Eon side, the other half of the building. Uh, and this is where we do all our quality control. So every machine that comes from the factory, we bring it in here, we open it up, we plug them in, and uh, we run through a series of checks. Uh, the factory does this as well. Um, this is us double checking, you know, the, the way that you, you get beyond 97 or 98% is you have to do it twice. So if you really want to catch all the little things, um, you have to check them again. Uh, we go the extra mile, you know. Uh, a lot of these machines, we check them and they, they really could just go straight to the customer. Um, but the smallest things, the smallest little blemish, 
you know, the factory moves very quickly. All factories do. Um, and when you're moving at a fast pace, a lot of times, you know, you miss little details. So over here, we, we're a little slower. Uh, we spend a little more time with the machines. And, uh, and the same, even just the voyage over here. Sometimes I open a container and all the machines are shifted to the side. Yeah. You know, so if you've ever seen any of those, those cargo ships crossing the entire ocean, sometimes they hit 50 foot swells and the yeah. ship's going up and down. And you know, sometimes containers fall in the ocean and people don't realize that. They yeah. think it's smooth sailing the whole way. But about every year, over a thousand containers fall into the ocean. Yeah. Uh, so here's Xavier, he's working on one of our Novas right now. And, uh, you know, again, we just kind of take our time. We want to create a better user experience. We want to make sure when you get the machine, you can just plug it in and, and get right to work. There's no surprises. Uh, it could be the smallest thing. Uh, so is he testing? Is he testing this machine right yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. Every single one of them. We test them, recreate them, send them out. So they all go through the process. Um, and you can see we have a lot of workstations. Closing workstations as we get better um, as the factory the factory is moving for the fourth time um, so that's been one of our biggest challenges has always been keeping up with the demand uh, since we started with Eon we've never been able to keep machines in stock um, and we did have a rough start because we started during COVID essentially our big boom happened at the exact time the factory and all the supply chains shut down yeah <laughs> Uh, and every time we think we're catching up, you know, we hit another spurt and we bury the factory again with orders. Yeah. Uh, and they, you know, in the last four years, they've had the move four times. So every year, we've been outgrowing the factory. Uh, this new one should hold us over for at least two or three years. Um, and you know, we're just we're just uh, hoping that we can get to a point where we can have some inventory and our lead times can be, you know, much smaller. Um, but again, it's, it's a quality thing. It takes longer to check them here. You know, it takes longer to build these machines too. We have a lot of features in them, especially the new red lines. There's a lot of new bells and whistles in there, a lot of new sensors. You know, there's, there's a, quite a bit more testing that gets involved in that. Uh, you know, that, that fixed beam path that we're using with the modular docking station for the tube, that means that the factory has to align every tube the exact same way. So before the tube, you generally you just grab a tube, put in a machine, and you make it work on that machine. Right. Here, these tubes have to work on every machine in the exact same position. So the, with the red line, I can grab a tube from one and swap it into another, turn it on, and just go to work um, and maintain the same beam path. But you know, it, it takes more time to do these things. So. And that's just a, a toolless mount that's on, the, on yeah. the red line. Right, correct. No tools. It's basically just two little levers. The tube comes up. Uh, we have the anode and cathode on disconnects, uh, the water lines as well. Um, so you can do a tube swap uh, in under five minutes. Wow. Um, yeah, and, and minor, minor alignment to anything. I thought I was doing good in under yeah. 30 minutes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the biggest pain points to owning a laser, is swapping the laser. And then after that 30 minutes is up, going through the mirror alignment, which you don't have to do. That's right. Yeah. And you, you still want to check it, while we're on the, on the topic, if the tube is off by a fraction of a degree yeah. in angle or height, you may you can correct the alignment probably from mirror one and everything will work fine from there. You don't have to obsess over it. I guess we'll wrap around here and we'll work our way back to the, uh, the front door again. Okay. Well, we could do the parts over there. Actually, I had just talked about that. I think we could make our way over to the, the parts bins back there. This is our lev rack system here. This is this is one of the neatest things we have for just our, our parts on demand. Essentially, all of the, uh, the shelves are suspended from above. So all of the parts for all the Eon machines are stored inside of these cabinets. You can come on this way too. And just kind of take a peek in here. That's great. So anything you need, you know, all the small stuff, yeah, you know, I can I can climb up in here essentially where they are you know the littlest thing you know belts 
Tons of those. Autofocus pins. You know, people bend those all the time. I mean, I got every bracket mirror. We have, you have everything you need here to build a, a machine. You know, camera mounts. Every machine comes with a camera now. Lenses. Steppers down there. Everything. You know, I've got, I, I've got a whole bin here of just laser heads. Literally every single part is is here. It's on. It's in stock. You know, downtime is a big thing. You know, for any business, when your laser's down, you're not making money. You're dead in the water. Um, so that's one of the big things that we we try to control here is how much time you spend. Trying to, trying to grab you. All right. See if you can sneak your your thing in here. Yeah. Okay. This is our 3D printing cell. Oh. Yeah. These are all a our print little, farm. Our little robots are here. Uh, <laughs> we uh, make quite a bit of brackets here. Um, yeah, the iris system that we use in our Novas for zone control on the exhaust is made here. Uh, a lot of the parts uh, for a multi roller. Um, anything that we're prototyping as well. You know, uh, we'd like to invent a lot of things. So, yeah, there's a. Uh, Gosh, I don't even know. 12, 20, about 20 3D printers in this little cell. Um, and it's kind of neat. Right now they're all kind of slacking. They didn't know it was coming, but usually they're all running at the same time. And it's uh, it's quite a sight. I see they have their uh, their own ventilation AC yeah. system and all. Yes. <laughs> These are just offices. These are all our offices here. So, you know, our sales manager, our inventory managers. Um, our social media team. Everyone's got their own little cube. These are all modular offices. Uh, another great Alibaba find. <laughs> I brought all yeah. these in. Yeah, they're kind of a pain to build, but you know, if you ever have to move, we can just put these on a forklift. Yeah, let's go. Let's go see the fibers, and then we'll kind of work our way back to the, the front door. Here's where we got all our, all our galvos, the EMP uh, galvo line. This is something we launched last year. Actually, uh, the previous uh, uh, December. Um, and, and this was this was funny. This was just like a, uh, a weekend project. We went, we created a really big incentive. That's actually going right now where uh, the show special is, you know, you, you order an Eon laser 100 watts or higher and we throw in a, you know, a galvo for free. Wow. Um, so, you know, this is just, Part of the EMP um, uh, fiber series that's coming out this year. Um, we've got a ton of these out now. Um, they're really nice. We spent a lot of time designing them. Uh, a lot of them have really unique features. Um, you know, we, we've added a task light on there. We've added uh, a, an integrated fan on there as well. All those things plug into the back of the uh, Galvo cabinet itself. Um, so it's all the missing parts that most people are trying to figure out. How do I exhaust this thing? You know, they end up using a six inch fan. And, you know, they really don't need it, you yeah. know? Um, so, you know, we kind of included it um, all with the machine. Um, and then there's some, I don't see any of them that are open right now that, well, we also added some smart keys to the tops of them. So you have all your all your main functions nice. on the top. So you can, you can um, get your red light on and off, start, or frame a job, pause. start, yeah. pause, um, turn the task light on and off, turn the fan on and off. Uh, it's a membrane that we that we design, and it sits right on top of the cabinet. Wow! Um, and it's just it's the most user friendly galvo that that there is. You know, it, it was hard because all the all the galvos on the market are the same essentially. You can only pick between different scan heads, uh, you know, different style frames, and then you know what major source you want to put in it. Right. Um, so we had to you know we had to talk to a few customers, and some of the stuff was obvious, and some wasn't. You know, what what is it you like? What are you what are you missing? Uh, and that's usually how you know how we. Uh, come about some of our inventions is you find all the pain points and you know you design around it uh, so every one of our gobbles they're, they're actually going really really well we have uh, a couple of UV ones coming in uh, so we're gonna release those uh, really soon as well um, and of the big lasers you saw on the other side um, we've actually got a couple of 1.5 kilowatt uh, lasers coming in the EMP fibers for cutting metal um, that are smaller footprint and and they run on 220, so you don't need three phase power. Um, hmm. If you can stay below, you know one and a half kilowatts, you can get away with using yeah. 220. Sure. Uh, so that's the idea, you know, trying to make those, you know, entry level 40k, 50k to get into something like that, where 
you know, a, a lot of companies that sell this kind of equipment, uh, they take advantage of the fact that there's not many people doing it and they'll 10x the price for no reason. It's called the auxiliary kit. So you get the task light, <clears throat> sits around your, your lens and shines down on your work area. It's nice. And then an uh, inline fan hooks up right to the pedestal on the side of the, uh, of the Galvo. Wow. You can see one hanging right up there. That is I like neat. that. That eliminates uh, you know, ports. I use ring lights around my galvo. Yeah. Yeah. Figure out you know, double-sided yeah. tape to stick them up yeah. there. And have cords running through an additional USB power. Outlet. It's the little so, things. Yeah. yeah, it plugs right into the back of the cabinet. We've done quite a bit of innovating inside the cabinet. Oh, we're gonna see David doing some tech support. Come on, he's good. Right corner, so I know that that people in that shop. Does that make sense? This is David Tejera. He's doing he's doing a little bit of tech support. Right, he's on so the phone right now, like doing a Skype or a FaceTime with a customer, just helping her through an alignment. Something simple, you know. But he spends the extra time, to make sure they get it right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that will represent your bottom left corner. Does that make sense? You can picture the tape almost like if it was your bed. So now we're going to move the laser head over here. Well, this looks like my favorite spot. Yeah, this is a, this is a break area. This is a big table. A lot of good meetings here. A lot of good Thanksgiving dinners. Uh, we have a really nice kitchen too. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we, we try to make this uh, comfortable but also immersive. We want, you know, we don't want to create closed off spaces where people are not connected to each other or, or aware of their surroundings. So that's why all our offices have glass on both sides and it's kind of intertwined, you know? I mean, if you're sitting in one of these offices, you get to see parts coming off of the uh, powder coat line and going into the oven. And you know, it's, a, it's pretty neat how we uh, are able to kind of work all this stuff around it. And it's, again, everything's modular. So, you know, it gives us flexibility. If we need space, you know, we can move things around and, you know, if we don't need it in an office, we can just take it apart, you know, pack it back up, throw it in a container out back. This is our tech support. This is where <laughs> the den right here. And this is where we run our, our, our support out of. Yeah. Uh, and these guys were on, they work seven out seven days a week. You know, we keep support, we keep someone on support Saturday, Sunday. Uh, we've got people that work at a later shift, so they'll stay till 9 p.m. Eastern time so that they can accommodate people on the West Coast. Uh, so we try to make sure there's always coverage. So you, know, you see a lot of those reviews where it's like, so-and-so help me, at, you know, in the middle of the night. It's, this is why, you know, we keep these guys kind of rotating through here on, on different schedules and um, it's nice. It keeps all the support tickets at bay. You know, we never come in here and we're like behind or someone's waiting. It's all about response times um, and, our, and our goal is always 15 minutes. So you send us an email, if it's not responded wow. in 15 minutes, it starts, set, it starts sending warnings to some of the staff and management. If another 15 minutes goes by, I start getting pinged with warnings that emails aren't being answered timely. Mm. Uh, and I can't tell you the last time I got one of those things. It's been a while. So they do a really good job of just making sure that they're always responding, always communicating. That's the key. Even, even if they don't have the answer, enough to just say, hey, I got your email. It's a big part of the business. It really yeah. is. It's yeah. help, help leave their sense of panic yes. until a solution's found. All right. That concludes our tour. Well, thank you so much, Danny. I really appreciate it. Hey, we've got a couple other guys here with us today, too. Maybe they can step in and introduce yeah. themselves so you can meet them as well. Yeah, you got to stand next to me though, because yeah, the camera wants to see me. Hey, uh, thanks for the tour. <laughs> yeah, Michael welcome. with Laser Engraving 911. Good seeing you again. All right, Chad. Chad with Mancrafter. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Anytime. Patrick, you know me. Light tours engraving. Yeah. Really appreciate the tour. Really great Thank meeting you so you guys. much. Thanks for coming nice out. Nice to meet you. Yeah, that's, that's great. Fantastic.